The time has come. The moment I feared when I first decided to make YouTube videos has finally come upon us. I knew that when I started this channel that there would be a day where I would have to make a video like this. A video in which I atone for my sin of being wrong on the internet. So I might as well rip the bandaid off and get it over with. I was wrong about Songs of Conquest. I think the game is actually good. Yeah, I know. I am shocked as well. Okay, in all seriousness, what is this about? People who have been watching this channel for a while might know about the fact that I made a video last year about a game called Songs of Conquest. In this video, I talk about this game and how I thought it was undercooked and not ready yet for prime time. I consider the game to be not worth the 30 euros asking price and not worth getting. However, that was my opinion about a year ago. I recently rebought the game and gave it another shot, and as I was playing it, I began to realize that my original analysis was just way off mark, to the point that after a while I considered it necessary to change the original title of my video to mark it as outdated, because clearly something had changed for me. So what is my opinion now? Why did I change my mind and what brought me to rebuy the game in the first place? Well first off, the game was at a sale. I paid like 17 euros for it this time and also watched a video with gameplay by someone that knows better about games than I do. I don't think that it is quite a secret that I'm pretty bad at video games. So often if I go into a game blind, I end up dying pretty quickly and get frustrated. You will be unsurprised to know that this is exactly what happened with my original playthrough. This was already not a good start, but I also made another crucial mistake at the time in that I compared the game to Heroes of Might and Magic 3, a game that is very dear to me. In hindsight was this foolish, since Sansa Conquest is very much its own beast in how it does things, though in my defense basically most of the game outlets and marketing of the game refer to it as a game inspired by Heroes of Might and Magic 3, so it's not surprising that I picked up on this. Hell, it's alleged connection to Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is why I got interested in the game in the first place. So if we take Songs of Conquest as its own game, and not a Heroes of Might and Magic like game, then that completely changes things. It means that I had to throw my preconceived notions out of the window, and it also means that we can look at this game more objectively. I think the final thing that really nails the coffin for my old video for me is just the fact that it is very clear that I, had been, that I had my expectations all in the wrong place. Ever since Ubisoft murdered the game series after Heroes 5, have I been finding myself wanting for a Heroes-like game, and most games that claim to be spiritual successors have just not been scratching that itch for me. This explains my initial disappointment with the game, but recently I have also come to a sad but true realization. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 was a game of its era, and there has never been, and there probably never will be, anything like it ever again. Why? Because, and I am paraphrasing Lady Emily here, the world in which Heroes 3 was made just doesn't exist anymore. And that is fine. Nostalgia is a great feeling, but it can also blind you to the imperfections of the past, and cause you to ignore the good things of the present and the future. Just because Songs of Conquest is not a nostalgia trip throwback with modern, sen modern sensibilities that I wanted it to be, does not mean that it is a bad game. And for me to treat it like that is just projecting my own blighted vision on every everyone else. So what do I like about Songs of Conquest then? Well, first of the obvious, the game is absolutely gorgeous. I know that there are people who don't like how so many indie games use pixel art, but if the art is really, really, really good like this, then I think even they cannot complain about it. Every art asset is beautifully handcrafted and rendered, and it all makes for an extremely pretty game. Second off, the gameplay. In my initial video, I complained about your wielder, that is your hero, being clunky and stiff. I had none of that on my second playthrough. You can traverse the map easily and it's clear where you can go and where you can't. It's also clear which map objects are interactable and which aren't. Building Town is pretty decently done as well. Admittedly I'm still not personally sold on it, but the fact that you tend to have limited building spots on the map does make for some strategic gameplay, because you need to put some thought in what buildings you place down where and what you think you're going to need for the battles ahead. Speaking of which, 
I think the part where the game really shines is the combat, because that is very well fleshed out and works really, really, really well, to the point that I genuinely like it more than most other combat systems in other strategy games. Most combat maps come with elevation and obstacles, so you need to think about positioning in combat, and especially with range, with range units, which tend to have a limited range. The more enemies you destroy, the more it increases something called momentum, which increases your statistics for your units. Furthermore, does every unit you have generate specific types of essence each turn? You can collect these differing types of essences and use these to cast spells that are available to you. This is seriously a breath of fresh air in comparison to the more traditional type of magic casting in games like this, where you just have a certain amount of spell points and use that to cast spells. With all of that said, I don't think the game is perfect. The AI can be brutal sometimes, and it cheats, and if you lose a game you often have to start all over again. Most campaign maps also only come with one very specific way to beat them, so you will often find yourself replaying these things a lot. This is not necessarily a bad thing if you're into that, but I prefer a bit more flexibility when it comes to campaign maps like this. Me failing to pick up some troops along the way should not be a reason for me to have to restart the map, is all I'm saying. The music is good, but not very memorable. It works well in-game, but I would not really listen to it outside of the game. I also found the campaign stories and the characters to be somewhat forgettable. I'm sorry writers, I know you're trying to make an epic world here and do some amazing world building, but I just could not get into it. And then there is the final sticking point for me. The price. This is obviously a very subjective thing, and I know that everyone thinks differently about it, but I still think that 30 euros is too much for what is offered. Don't get me wrong, what is there is good and very well polished, and if you're a fan of fantasy strategy games, then this is definitely worth your time to check out, but 30 euros is just a lot of money for me, and I cannot really justify that price. So would I recommend Songs of Conquest? Yes, but only on a sale. I think the game has some amazing bones, and I'm looking forward to see what Lava Potion will do with it. Maybe once they add 2 or 3 extra factions, I could recommend the game at the 30 euros price point, but until that time comes, I would wait for a Steam sale. Thankfully, this game does seem to be on sale pretty often, so my sticking point is less of an issue than you would think. Anyway, I think that is it for me. I would like to formally apologize to Lava Potion for my negligent reporting, and I am curious to see what the future of this game looks like. See you all around.